Mama, Mama, can we have Nginx? We have Nginx at home, Blin. The Nginx at home? Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to set up your first Nginx web server in production. It's gonna be a blast. Let's get going. Let me quickly show you what we're going to be creating in this tutorial. In this tutorial, you're going to learn the absolute basics of Nginx. We'll be creating a simple static website that is running in production. On the Linode, to be more specific, and we're using Docker to dockerize our Nginx web server. Let me quickly explain what Nginx is. Nginx is a web server, which means it takes requests that the user sends to the server, for example, to example.com, and forwards them to the correct domain. We want example.com to go to a static HTML files that we have deployed. But for example, if somebody else wants to access django.example.com, we would forward him to our Django backend, the Django website. And this is really, really cool. And of course, which I forgot is Nginx will then send the appropriate resource always back to the client in the form of a response. If it cannot find the resource, the client will get the most infamous 404 error delivered right to his doorstep. Another thing that Nginx does that it blocks off all ports except the port 80, which is HTTP, and the port 443, which is HTTPS. Those are ports that your browser really well and intuitively knows, which makes it really easy. A lot of ports here are blocked. So if you have, for example, your Django web server, it doesn't need to worry about what ports it should allow or block, or how many connections it can handle. Nginx can handle up to a lot of concurrent connections and can even do load balancing, which means, oh, I know that this Django instance is getting a little bit full with all of the users requesting it. Why shouldn't I create a second one of those or a third one to handle the load? And then I can scale it down afterwards. These are all features that Nginx has, but what we're interested in most today for this tutorial is that I'm going to show you how to create the Nginx server using Docker, deploy it onto Linode to just serve you static HTML files. If in the future you'd like to see me use it as a reverse proxy, which is what I have described with the subdomains accessing different parts here or the automatic scaling part, just let me know in the comments. But this is the bare minimum that you might want to know about Nginx and then you can do further research and you can learn more. That out of the way, I'd say let's continue. The requirement to follow along with today's tutorial is that you're gonna need a GitHub or GitLab account. You're going to need Git installed on the system as a version control system. You're going to need Docker Desktop installed because we're gonna be using Docker in this tutorial to make our job a lot more simple. You're going to need an account at Linode or any other hosting provider that provides SSH access to a virtual server. And you're gonna need an IDE of your choice. I'm going to use an IDE of JetBrain called WebStorm. You can also use PHPStorm, PyCharm, or any other IDE that they provide. But for today's tutorial, a simple code editor to our, like Visual Studio Code might totally suffice. After having all the requirements set up, let's get going. Go to your GitHub account and go to your repositories. Create a new repository. We can keep it public for, public for this tutorial as I have nothing to hide. You might want to put it to private if you want to do something special with it afterwards. And I'm just going to call it nginx docker tutorial. The description is going to be <laughs> for any of my Jojo fans out there. Now we can just create a repository. If you're using VS Code, you can just import the repository in, I guess. You can also follow the commands here to initialize git, add the readme and everything else. I'm just going to use the included feature in WebStorm to get it from the version control. I'll go to my GitHub account that I've linked and type in nginx. We're gonna click on the nginx docker tutorial here and we're gonna clone it. We're gonna trust the project and now we have everything set up with GitHub. The first thing we need to do is to create the docker compose file. For that I just went under the documentation for getting started and I'm copying out the version and the servers. If you don't know what docker or docker compose is, just follow along with the tutorial for now, and it'll be clear once everything is running, what everything here is doing. Don't worry about it for now. Next thing that we need here is the basic configuration for Nginx, because what we're currently doing is we are describing what containers or applications or like what little server we'd like to have started. And in this case, this is gonna be our web server. This is just the name. And we want it to have the image of Nginx. If you want to look up anything anything more about the image or the information, you can just control click it and you'll be directed to the official Nginx image where you can see all of the information on how to run it with Docker. We can see that for the Docker Compose we might want to add some ports. I want to map the port of 80 on my local machine to the port 80 on the container. What this is going to do for us is when we now visit localhost, the port 80, which is the standard HTTP port, is going to be mapped to the port 80 on the Nginx. And as we know, Nginx by default has the port for HTTP and HTTPS open by default. This should be all the configuration we need to do. Now we just need to make sure that our Docker desktop is up and running. And as we can see, the engine is running. If you go into the command line, we can type in docker compose up 
and I'm gonna append this dash D flag so that we do not get spammed with the log output. As you can see, it's creating the Nginx web server. If you now hop onto the browser and type in localhost, we see, welcome to Nginx. If you see this page, your web server is successfully installed. Nice, this is great. We have the first step successfully done. So what's currently happening is that we spun up a container. Container containing our Nginx web server and we have allowed this communication to the outside world. Usually a container is self-contained, which means that everything that happens inside the container should stay inside the container. If we want anything from inside the container to go to the outside world, we need to map it. The same thing is if we now want to allow the server access to static files so that we can create a website or anything else, we need to share the storage space that the container has via a volume. Let me show you how to map that. Before we map that, I'm really annoyed at the name here. I want to change this just to just say Nginx. We can do that by saying container name and we're just gonna call it nginx now if we want to bring our entire docker setup down we just say docker compose down and now it's stopping all of the containers and if we look over in docker there's nothing running and if i now say docker compose up and we detach it again so that we don't see the console log output here we see that now the container is named nginx okay to figure out how we can set up our first static pager hosting we first need to figure out where nginx is actually storing our website so for that let's do a quick google search I found this really great article online we now know that if we want to have some HTML files, we need to put them into the source user share nginx HTML directory. We can take this path and copy this over. And now let me explain to you how that works. The first thing we are doing is with the dot we are looking at the current directory. The left side is always what we have. So it's saying in our directory we want to have a source directory and that is going to be linked with the folder of user share nginx HTML. If you now put an index HTML file in here, yeah, we want to add it to source control and we want to call this hello nginx and we want to give it a tag of hello web server. If you now want to see this, we need to bring it down and bring it back up. If you now open to a beautifully crafted website and refresh it, we see hello web server with hello nginx. The cool part about this now is that we can do live changes as well. If you don't want to say hello web server, but we want to say goodbye exam and we refresh the page, we can see that it's not saying goodbye exam. This is everything that you need to know about nginx for now. Don't worry about config files. Don't sweat about this. Now you know how to create a simple static website with nginx. It took you a few minutes. If you want to learn more about nginx, let me know in the comments. The last goodie that we're going to be doing today is I'm going to show you how to deploy this onto a live server. There's so much more to nginx that you can configure, that you can do, but this is just a step I want to teach you to start learning and to understand a little bit. Then you can go and research off on your own and learn so much more. If you now want to get it onto Linode, we need to first upload the changes to GitHub. We can upload the changes by just saying initial commit because it is a first commit after all. And push. If you now hop over to our GitHub repository and we refresh the page, we can see, yes, we have our Docker Compose file and we have a source file. Now it's time to bring out the big guns. We're going to create our little node, which is just a small virtual server. And we're going to go to marketplace and type in Docker because Linode is so awesome. We get the ability to just get Docker already pre-installed on our Linode. We can skip over those optional things because I don't want to bog the tutorial down with it now. Debian 11, pick the region closest to you. I picked Frankfurt A. Then you go to shared and we take one nanode for this project. Then we enter a highly secure root password. I will probably do a tutorial about SSH keys in the future as it is so much more comfortable to use than passwords in my opinion. Now wait while your Linode is being proficient. Grab yourself a tea, something to drink. I have some nice <sighs> drink here. Now our Linode is running. To access a running Linode, we can just go in via SSH by clicking on copy here, or we can launch the Lish console and access it in the browser. I'm a terminal guy, I just, like to use it on my own machine. Now for PowerShell being opened, we can paste this in with right click. Yes, we would like to accept the fingerprint and we can enter a password. Now with access to machine, verify that Docker and Git have been installed successfully as we're gonna need both. To check if Docker's installed, you can simply run Docker PS. Yep, that command worked with Docker installed. And if you wanna check if Git is installed, you can just do git dash dash version. And you can see that we have git installed. And all that we need to do now to get this to run, check this out. It's going to be so simple. As we go to our code, copy the link of the repository, go into our, into our server, in the home directory. We just type git clone, red mouse button to paste this in and hit enter. Now if we check the folder structure, we can cd into our nginx tutorial. All that we need to do now is we need to use the same command we did on the local machine. We just type in docker compose 
up dash d. Now we're waiting while it's pulling down the nginx image from the internet. And if we now hop onto a browser and paste the address in, we should see goodbye exam. The website is finally working. And as a goodie, I'm now going to show you how to update this because you stayed all the way to the end and you really wanted to learn something. So how do we update this if we make now new changes to the website? Really simple. Let's say we want to add an about me page. And we say, let this page say about me. And the body tag is going to be something that nobody expects. With our about me page in our creator, we can go over to the index and we can link it up by saying href about me. And inside the p tag, we can just say about me. If we go back to the page and we refresh it, make sure it's a localhost page. You can click on about me and we get, you thought it was an about me page, but it was me. Dio. <laughs> Oh, you really thought you could go a video without a Jojo reference, didn't you? If we want to now upload our files, we can just apply the changes. We could just say create an about me HTML page. And then we push it. In our nginx, we can just say git pull. And it'll pull the newest version for us. If we now cd into our source directory and type ls, we can see we have an about me page. The best part is because we have now set uh, we have set nginx up to use the contents of a source directory, it will be immediately reflected in the page. If we now go over here and refresh the page, by example, about me. The great thing is that the sky is the limit. You can hook PHP into it. You can set up node behind it. You can link the configuration file via a volume as well. And then you can upload your own configuration or you have, can have different configurations for production and development. There's so much to go in depth about this, but I just wanted to give you the basics to be less scared of Nginx. The place where you could go from here as well is you could fully automate this deployment pipeline where you don't even need to think about uploading or pushing or pulling it afterwards. You could check out one of my videos on how to create a fully automatic deployment pipeline or just have a little bit of fun and try to look up GitHub Actions and figure it out on your own. It's going to be a blast, I promise you. Now, take care and let me know in the comments what you'd like me to see me code next. Would you like me to put Node.js to the, into the backend? Would you like to see me hook it up to Django? Should I put an SSL certificate in front of it in the next video? You decide. And with those words, I wish you a wonderful day and I see you in the next video.